Hi, welcome to IST290, Ways to Search the Marks Library's Resources. So today I'd like to show you five different ways that you can search the Marks Library's resources. From the library's main page at southalabama.edu forward slash departments forward slash library, you end up at the Marks Library's homepage. The first search option we're going to look at is OneSearch. So in OneSearch, we can search by keyword. So if we have decided we want to write a paper on um, tattoos and culture, we can just type tattoos and culture in there. We're doing a keyword search, so I'm looking for articles and books that have tattoos and culture in them and there are 2,381 articles and are books that have tattoos and culture in the title or in the abstract or keywords. I can set some limits or filters on the left hand side. Maybe I only want to look at scholarly peer-reviewed journals. And so you can see that the number of articles has decreased. Maybe I only want to look at more current Articles. Well, I've already shown you these tutorials, or maybe you haven't. We, um, so I can continue with my uh, setting filters and just reading the titles and viewing these articles in the library's databases. Let's go back and see another way to search from OneSearch. That was a keyword search. Let me take that out. Now perhaps I have spoken to um, my professor or someone who has already done research in this area and they suggested that I read a book title. And so I'm going to look for the title in the library's databases OneSearch will search all of the journals and publications that we have, and it also searches for books on the bookshelf. So I want to find the book, The um, Blue Tattoo. I want to know if the library has the blue tattoo. So I can click search, and the search results indicate that we have the blue tattoo. The first result is an electronic resource. So this is an ebook that is available in the library's databases. If I click online access, I, the tab, uh, uh, the browser opens a new tab and gives me access to the book. So I can read the contents of the book here. I can look at the cover, illustrations. The chapters of the book are each separately uh, given to me as PDFs that are downloadable. So I could download these and read them on my tablet or save them to a, um, a flash drive and then read them at my leisure. So I'm going to go back and see what else it offers me. The Blue Tattoo, The Life of Olive Oatman is also available in the Marks Library book stacks. So here's the call number and if you remember from the uh, library tour of the physical spaces, I showed you or talked to you about how to find books when you have the call number. So you could bring this call number to the library and pull this physical book off the shelf. The blue tattoo is available from another ebook vendor called EPUB, so I could maybe read it in this EPUB vendor. You can pick either one. Sometimes we just end up with um, access to through more than one vendor for ebooks. Well, you can see the interface for this is a little bit different. The chapters are in this little scroll bar here, so I could just go through reading the chapters. If I wanted to save these pages or add them to a folder or email the pages, I have some of those options up here. So let's stick with what we were doing in the result list. Obviously, we don't have 162 items named the blue tattoo. If I keep scrolling down, item number four is actually an audiobook review of the blue tattoo as an audiobook. So I could read a review of the audiobook. 
Okay, so that is how we could use the library search features in the OneSearch box to search for a book title. Now, as I'm conducting my research and moving on, perhaps someone suggests um, an author to me who has done some scholarship on tattoos in culture. And I happen to know that that person's name is Jennifer Putsey. So I have an author's name. I click the radio button, author, put the author's name in, and click on search. I have uh, one of 18 results indicated here. The selected letters of Elizabeth Stockard were edited by Jennifer Putsey. So that's not the book written by Jennifer Putsey. Here's another book edited by uh, Jennifer Putsey. Identifying Marks, this is an electronic book, an e-book, that was written by Jennifer Putsey. So again, I could read the online version of the book. Project Muse gives me access to the book. It opens in a new tab, and I could read the book there. From the result list, I've gone back to the result list. We also have the book as a physical book. There's the call number which uh, you would bring to the library and pull the book off the shelf. So we looked at how to use keyword search, a title search, and an author search in the library's uh, OneSearch feature. We could also just go right to the SouthCat catalog. This is like what you might call the OPAC in your public library, and we can put in Tattoo and Culture, South Cat catalogs all of the physical items that we have, like physical books that we have access to in the library. So there are seven results on Tattoo and Culture. Customizing the Body is the Art and Culture of Tattooing. This is a book written in two, by Clinton Sanders in 2008, published in 2008 and here's the call number. It tells me that the book is indeed available. Uh, there are seven, six other titles, so you could read those titles, decide if you want to check them out. You can see that uh, Customizing the Body, the Art and Culture of Tattooing, is not available in the Marks Library book stack, so it's checked out um, or otherwise not on the shelf, could be being repaired these other items are available. Actually, when we get down to fandom, image, and authenticity, authenticity, this is actually an ebook. So if I click on the ebook, I see it is an electronic book accessible through EBL. If I click on that, I'm asked to log in to the library's um, system. And, oh dear, it tells me that book is not available, so the book may actually be checked out. Oh, it says, yeah, no, this item is not available right now. So it's possible that someone else is reading that book right now. So that's how you search for books in the basic search. I could also use the advanced search feature and put in even more keywords. Maybe I want to look at tattoo. I'll leave it as and culture, and let's just look at European culture, and click on search. And so now I have one book written on the body, The Tattoo in European and American History, edited by Jane Kaplan, and it's in the Marks Library book stacks, third floor north. Here's the call number. This item is not checked out. So we looked at OneSearch, and then we looked at using the SouthCat catalog. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to search databases and e-reference. So if uh, you have been directed to use a particular database by your professor, or maybe you've had a consultation with a reference librarian, or a chat session with a reference librarian, and they suggested that you look at um, EditLib, I could click on E and then go down to Edit Lib, and then I, it's now called LearnTechLib. The title changed, 
and then I can start searching within edit lib for whatever topic I'm looking for. So that's how you would use the database um, at list. You could look through the databases and just scroll through this long alphabetical list of databases and find the one you're looking for. Or could, you could use these alphabetical tabs to jump to different databases. As well, you can search the databases or look for a database using the tags in the right-hand column. So if you don't know the name of the database, but you know you want to search a couple of different databases, then you could just use the tabs feature. Maybe we, you want to look at um, engineer or engineering databases. So if you click on engineering, all of the engineering databases are grouped here in this list. So that will save you some time from scrolling through all the um, hundreds or perhaps thousands of databases that we subscribe to. So that's searching databases and e-reference. You can also browse journals under library resources if you click on the journal and ebook list. We have um, a list by discipline of all of the publications, that is journals, that we subscribe to. So if I wanted to look at journals on literature and writing, see here's the browse by discipline. I can just go over here to literature and writing. We have 1,516 publications we subscribe to and they're all listed here. So I could just browse these publications. Maybe I want to look at um, advances in the history of rhetoric. So this is a journal publication. It's available to us in Communication and Mass Media Complete and we have access to all the articles published since 2006 to the present. Now sometimes you will uh, look at a publication and notice that, that we have limited access. For instance, this Journal of Sport Literature is available in Literature Resource Center from 2005 to the present. However, if I were to try and get it through ProPress periodicals, we only have access to it from 1983 to 2005 in that database. This is the nature of the way we uh, get information through the pub publishers. Um, you can see that African American Review, we have lots of access from 92 to the present. In JSTOR Arts and Sciences Collection, we have 2008 with a four year delay. So we would only be able to get articles that are four years old. That's why we have more than one way to get access to um, the articles because we can provide you with a wider range of access. So that was browsing by discipline. But if I know that I want articles or yeah, journals, sorry, journals on the topic of education, I can just put education in the search box and search. So all uh, 13,879 articles or journals, I'm sorry, um, are available in education. Now this actually includes ebooks, so that's why that number is so inflated, the 13,879. We do actually have a lot of education journals, but this is also telling us ebooks. So the same thing applies. I could click on the journal Education. It's available in a number of different databases. Uh, this from 1993 to present, this from 1969 to present. So in general, I will just go ahead and find the database that provides me with the widest range of access, such as Academic Search Complete, and I click on that and now I can just browse through the issues. There's the 2016 all the way down to the beginning of access, 2016, and then each volume in issue is listed. And when I click on the volume in issue, I can see 14 articles were published in this volume. And I can read those right here. So it's a pretty cool way of browsing 
and reading journals online. It saves you a lot of money. You don't have to subscribe to them. So that was looking at journals um, by subject and by discipline. There's one more way that you can search the university's um, databases, and that is by going to uh, Google Scholar, which is at scholar.google.com. So this is not your regular Google. This is Google's attempt to uh, find scholarly articles for you uh, from the world of information that is on the internet. Now you won't necessarily get access to the articles if you're not on the campus or not signed into the library's webpage, but Google will go ahead and index articles for you. Um, and it'll tell you if the article is available full text at USA right here. So I'm sitting in my office so I can just click on this link and Google will actually tell me where I can find that article in the library's databases. And I can go ahead and start looking for the article. So that's a pretty cool thing um, that you can do using Google Scholar. You just use the search box, put in your um, topic, and um, click on the search, and it'll tell you if the article is available. If the article is not available in the university library's databases, you may not be able to get access to it at all. This is actually an ebook, so you can see it indexed um, an Amazon book. This may be a Google book, but at any rate, it's a, a book that I could buy. Okay. So let's do a little recap of where we've been and what we've learned in this session. We talked about using OneSearch to search by keyword title or author. And then we looked at the Southcat catalog to find books and of course we found some ebooks. We looked at databases by database name, that long alphabetical list, and we were also offered the opportunity to search by uh, subject area using the column on the right hand side. We browse journals and ebooks by subject and by discipline. And then I showed you how to search in Google Scholar. So that's five ways that you can use the library's databases to get information out of them. Um, and of course, if you get stuck, you can always chat with a librarian or ask, call your librarian and ask for help. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for listening.